Windsurf or Cursor AI? A tale as old as time. Like Coke versus Pepsi, French fries versus chips, Apple versus Microsoft, Fellowship of the Ring or the Two Towers. Truth be told, I use both of them. Windsurf was actually the first AI power IDE that I used on my journey toward vibe coding glory. But here's the thing, Windsurf is actually easier and in my experience better for people that are truly beginners. So in this video, I'm gonna explain the four reasons why that's the case. So this video is gonna be perfect for you if you're torn between Cursor and Windsurf and you want someone to finally tell you what's what. Or maybe you're actively going hard with Cursor and you're wondering if Windsurf maybe is actually a better choice. Either way, if you're a noob and want a quicker time to meaningful result for less money, then stick around for the next 10 minutes. Maybe take a load off, brew a nice tea, Earl Grey, hot, and join me on this magical excursion through the many features of Windsurf by Codium. So first on our list is pretty simple. Pricing. So if we side by side these two tools, we can immediately see the, the difference. Windsurf is going to run you $15 per month and Cursor is gonna run you $20 per month. But is the value the same for that money? Is $15 on Windsurf the same as what $15 on Cursor would be? Like what's the feature parity? So as we scroll down, we can see Windsurf, 500 prompt credits per month. And then if we hop over to Cursor, we see unlimited completions, and then you get 500 requests per month with unlimited slow requests. So both of these tools giving 500 requests per month. So the first natural question is, well, what do they consider a credit? Because as we can see, they're using different language. So Windsurf is calling it a prompt credit. Cursor is calling it a request, or they used to call it a completion. They must've actually just changed this. I did some digging. I actually reached out to Cursor support specifically to get clarification on this because Windsurf is very clear about it. Cursor was not. What do they consider a credit? Basically a credit is a prompt, right? A message that you would send into the system using one of the premium models. What that means is it doesn't matter how many files it goes out and, and edits. It doesn't matter how many tool calls it makes. It's all going to count as one credit. So if I was to go through and say, hey, build me a UI that does X, Y, and Z, one credit. So for the most part, they are practically the same except Cursor is gonna cost you about $5 more per month. So where are they actually meaningfully different? So the way that cursors actually works is you get unlimited completions, meaning you can always ask it stuff and you will get some sort of response out. You can also get access to, for both of these tools, for their free model that they have, where there's no limit on it. And then we get 500 requests per month. And so what these are, they're premium requests. So usage of a premium model like Claude 3.7, Sonnet, for example, would be a premium model. So you get 500 of those completions per month. And then the thing that's a differentiator for Cursor is you get unlimited slow requests. What that means is if you run out of this 500, they are going to let you continue to make requests. You're just going to the back of the line. And so truth be told, like if you're really in there and you're vibe coding and you're feeling it and you're building your app out, getting throttled in the middle of that process kind of sucks and throws you out of your rhythm. And you might need to just go stop and wait for your credits to recycle or go buy more credits. And so Cursor also has this max mode. And what this is, is that you're basically able to use a full context window, which long story short means you can send a lot more through and get a lot more back because you're not being limited as much by the context window size. Now, as far as I've been able to tell, Windsurf doesn't have a version of that. They do have access to more premium models like the Claude 3.7 thinking version, which takes more credits, but they do not have the same thing as a max mode, which just gives you a giant context window to work with. Now, the other differentiator here that's definitely a win in the on the side of Windsurf is that especially if you're making your way over from a tool like Lovable or V0, you have this option for app deploys. So you get five app deploys per day on Windsurf. Now you'll recognize this if you've used a tool like Replit or Lovable or V0 before where you can publish it and you get like that little generated URL that you can share with people. That is what that is giving you access to. For me, this isn't a huge needle mover because I would rather spend that time learning how to go out and do the DevOps side and actually publish this to a live URL on the domain that I want it to be on. 
maybe learn how to actually set up a process where when you push to your GitHub repository, it triggers a change in your actual production code. I would rather spend time learning that stuff. So that feature alone isn't a real big needle mover for me. So again, for a beginner, what does all that mean? First, let's just address this limit of 500 prompt credits. Will you actually hit that? As a complete beginner, I would say probably not. So for context, I use the shit out of Cursor and Windsurf for the stuff I do on my channel, as well as all of my own personal projects. And I just looked inside my cursor and I'm at about 400 credits out of the 500 with five days left to go in my billing cycle. Now, even if you did hit that, Windsurf charges $10 for every 250 additional credits. So for relatively cheap, only it would end up being $25. So $5 more than what you're getting with cursor. You're getting a 50% increase in the number of credits. So again, if you did run into that situation where you actually hit the 500 in order to like get that next tier up, it's not that expensive to do and value like the value for that compared with cursor is pretty high. So the other thing that I just want to address is this max option inside of cursor. So I, I do use max when I need to solve like a harder problem. But if you're controlling your context properly, which we're gonna talk about in reason number three coming up shortly. I'm just not that convinced that that extra context window size really makes enough of a difference to justify uh, the difference in the price, especially if like you're really a beginner and the difference between a, a $15 plan and a $20 plan is actually meaningful to you. I don't think that's worth it to splurge up for the $20 plan. So all in all, on the pricing side of things, I think Windsurf's a clear winner. So next up, a pretty awesome feature is Windsurf's preview function. So to be honest, one of the only, probably the only reason actually that I would ever consider using a tool like Lovable at this point is that I really do enjoy the ability to select an element from the screen and pass it through to my IDE, right? To be able to pass it through to a prompt. And with Windsurf's newer updates, you can now do that through this preview function. So let's say I have all of this code in here that is rendering out different screens for me. All right, so right here, we're looking at some different screens that I designed inside of my free school group, right? Where we have the different prompts, we go through our four-step system and we have all of these different screens that we designed for a recipe app. Well, what if I wanted to update specific pieces of some of these components? We can hop into Windsurf and we have this option down here. So. When we're inside of our cascade mode, we have this little tool tray down here. One is for MCP servers, one for preview, one for deploy. If we come down here and hit deploy, we can hit preview, start preview. Now, after this is done compiling, we have this little built-in browser right here. And so let's say as I'm moving through this, there's an element that I want to change, right? So say there's something on this and I don't like how, I don't know, when I click it, it sends it to a second line. I actually kind of don't like how that happens, right? It goes from all on one line to a second line. Let's say I want to update that. Well, what I can do is I can click this send element option, and then I can pick any component that I have on any of my screens. So I could come through here into the profile setup screen. I could click on this line right here. And now you're going to see this past the element through to my window in Windsurf. And so I could come through here now and I could say, anytime a selection happens, this moves to a second line. I want it to retain one line, no matter the highlight status. Right, and now I can send through that specific context. And so this is great because with these tools, it's often a battle of the context. How can we use the same tool, but push it to the limits by being intelligent about what we send to it? And so tools like this preview function are great because they help us get the correct response out of these tools earlier on in the process, right? We want the correct solution the first time so that we're not wasting time and resources, right? Credits, we don't want to be wasting any of those things. So gone are the days of asking for a very simple change and next thing you know, everything is broken and nothing works the way that it did. But that brings us to number three, and this is a difference that is honestly really underappreciated and undervalued, but it is huge. Built-in memories and 
context management. Now these are technically two, but I thought, hey, this is my video. If I want to make two equal to one, then so be it. So first off, we have this option for built-in auto memories, which you can actually browse. So what this means is that when you solve a meaningful problem or come to some sort of other important convention, Windsurf actually remembers what you discovered and it can reference it in the future. So one very concrete example of this in the example we just went through, we went and made that edit inside of the uh, Windsurf preview. Well, Windsurf went through and it formed a memory of my styling preferences. So now it knows that I like to use Tailwind. I like to avoid unwanted wrapping of text, right? All of these other things. And this is a basic example, but it's gone through and it has memorized that. So that next time when I want to go update one of these, like this one, for example, it's going to know how I want that problem solved. And so again, we can browse these by going to manage and then going over to memories and looking at our memories. And of course we can come through and edit them. And so I'll give you another concrete example. In my backend Python servers, I use a tool called Alembic to manage database migrations. Meaning that if I add some feature later on in my app and I need to now go update what my database looks like for that feature, I need to migrate that so that the old database can work with the new code that I have. Well, Cursor, for example, was a total pain in the ass when it came to doing that type of stuff. It would constantly try to reinvent the wheel, use other technologies that I hadn't specified, sometimes sidestep the process altogether and say, hey, we're not gonna do a migration, or generally just suck at running them and have to try 50 different ways to do something where each one broke every single time. Well, with Windsurf, we can create a memory of how we solved that problem last time so that when I have to go do that migration in the future for a different feature, it knows how to run that process already. And it's not starting at zero, trying to invent a way to solve the problem. And so again, the really cool thing is that I can come in here and I can browse them. Now, if I wanted to do this in cursor, it is a bit more involved and I have two options. One, I could use an MCP server that is built for graph memory, like this one here, or I would have to come over and create a custom markdown file and make sure to come over here and pass it through every time I make a request. Some other examples where something like this would be super helpful. Maybe you have specific ways of wanting to work with certain APIs. Maybe you're just looking for consistency in how your app chooses to style things and style components and build components. Maybe you have specific workflows when you're debugging things or trying to solve problems that you want it to follow every time. For example, anytime I'm trying to figure out a problem that's a super pain in the ass, I like to put robust error logging in place. And so Windsurf, if I give it a memory, knows to go do that anytime I tell it that I need to solve a problem. It's gonna say, hey, First thing I need to do is I need to go and I need to add robust error logging. And so like I said, something that's kind of related to this concept is context management, which is the part two of this feature slash tip. Now, I don't have statistics on this one. That's just my experience and the experience I've seen other people have when comparing Windsurf and Cursor. Windsurf is significantly better at helping you automatically manage the context of your project meaning it picks the correct files to analyze, edit, delete, whatever, more often. And so a simple example here inside of my Vibe designing workflows, I often start with what we have here, a vanilla React app, right? I just used create React app to create this and then I go through designing different screens. Well, pretty much any time I do this, when I give cursor my prompt of what I want to build out next, it almost always goes through and tries to recreate a package.json for me. It'll also go through and not realize that I have an app.js file in here that's already responsible for rendering the main root of the app. And so it goes through and next thing you know, you've got four or five different files that you never intended to have that are now just existing inside of your project wreaking havoc. Especially if you're not really paying attention to what it is building for you, you're not gonna realize that it's just built a bunch of stuff that you don't actually need. 
And so then what do you have to do? You have to spend time and credits reversing out of that change. And this problem gets even worse the larger your project. Because nothing is worse than giving a prompt like, hey, I need help debugging this authorization issue I just ran into. And next thing you know, it's gone out and it's generated a new auth handler and modified a bunch of your backend code that was already pretty much working. And so Windsurf wins big here really for two reasons. Number one, you are paying for those mistakes from Cursor. So from a pricing perspective, proper context management actually saves you quite a bit of money. Number two, you're paying for those mistakes in terms of time and sanity spent trying to come up with solutions to problems. And so that takes me to the last feature number four, which is their one click MCP servers. And so one of the coolest things that Windsurf does well is that installing MCP servers takes one click. And so again, for a beginner especially, having to add a custom server like you would do inside of Cursor can sometimes be a little bit of intimidating, especially again, if you're new and you've never looked at anything like this, having to stare at a JSON file and know what to update to make a configuration work. And so it's amazing to have this option where I can come in here, say I wanna add a server, click on like the GitHub MCP server, pop in my GitHub access token, save it, and I'm ready to go. Now, what I will say is that Windsurf doesn't have a ton of these pre-configured and ready to go out of the gate, but it does indicate very clearly what their direction is as a company when it comes to how they're building Windsurf. They are making AI software development more accessible and viable to people like you and me. So all that to say, Windsurf is very obviously establishing itself as the go-to AI IDE for people that are truly trying to vibe code. Maybe you've got some degree of technical know-how or you're beginning to build that know-how and like you want to actually get to coding. Windsurf in that case is to me an obvious choice. Whether you're making the leap from a hands-off tool like Lovable or Replit or V0 or you're a more junior developer that just wants a cool tool that's gonna work, again, Windsurf's a great choice. So stay tuned for the next video because we're going to be going in depth into Windsurf and all the different features that it has to offer beginners. So you won't wanna miss that one. But that is it. I will see you in the next video.